Hello guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. So today I'm going to show you how to make this Chinese lantern in Blender 2.92. So I'm going to go through the whole modeling process and then we'll touch a little bit on some basic shaders. But this is primarily just to teach you how to do this really cool modeling here. Make a relatively good looking Chinese lantern. So you can see this is the final result. If you do make this, you can share it with the Pixar 3D community on Discord. You can check that link in the description below. And as always, I will be making these blend files available on my Patreon. And I do appreciate all the support I've been getting there as well. So without wasting any more time, let's get into making this fun little um, project here. So with a new scene open up in Blender, let's go ahead and just select all of the default objects, hit X and delete. So now we have a nice clean scene. Now we're going to start up with something super simple. That's just going to be by adding in a UV sphere. So if you go Shift A, your mesh options are up here. You're just going to come down and we're going to select the UV sphere. Now before you get too happy with editing this, just come down here where it says add UV sphere. And we want to change a few things. This has way too many segments at the moment. So let's come here to the segment count. And I found something that works really well is 18. You don't really want to go past anything higher than 20. That really will kind of make the ribs a little bit too thin. So let's go with a value of 80, 18. Okay, so I'm going to type in 18 here and then just drop that down. So now we have 18 segments around here and that's going to be perfect for what we want to do. So let's tab into edit mode here. And we're now inside of edit mode. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to, because most Chinese lanterns are not perfectly round balls. Some of them are in reference I've seen, but most of them are a little bit slant, um, flat. So what we're going to do with all of this geometry selected is that we're going to go and hit S on our keyboard and then we're going to hit Z. So S and Z and that'll restrict the scaling to Z axis here. So we're going to scale it down about this much. You don't want to go too flat. So just something like that should be fine. So it's kind of like a little bit of a squash kind of almost pumpkin shape. Then we're going to come up here and select the top vertex at the very top. Very simple. And we're going to hit X and just delete that vertex. And then we're going to go down to the bottom, select the bottom vertex, hit X and delete that vertex. We don't need those at the moment. So let's go shift alt while we're at the top here. So shift and alt and just click on an edge here. And that's going to loop select these vertices for us. And then we're going to hit G twice. If you double tap the G key on your keyboard, you can slide this edge along um, its normal. So I'm going to go with something like this. We're going to have like kind of a bigger opening at the top. And we can go ahead and do the same thing at the bottom. So select shift alt, click on an edge here to loop select double G and you're just going to slide it over like that. And that's all there is to that. I mean, this is pretty much the cloth part of the thing almost done. So what we're going to quickly do, and this is super simple, is at the top here, we're going to go shift alt again and just click on the edge. But this time, instead of scaling anything, we're just going to hit shift and D. That's going to duplicate it. Right click to let go. And if that um, still active, you're going to hit E to extrude and Z. And once again, you're going to restrict the extrusion to the Z axis and you're going to bring it up about this much. So you can just go G, Z to move it if you want. So just something like that. And then you're going to go E to extrude, S to scale and just extrude it in just a little bit. And then you're going to go E to extrude in Z and just bring it down on the Z down to it's almost at the bottom there. And then you're going to go E to extrude, S to scale you're going to bring it in about this much and then we're going to go E to extrude and Z and we're going to extrude it down like that and we'll leave it at that for now but while we still have these vertices active here if we hit Control L it'll only select this top part because that's um, disconnected from the bottom geometry and while we have this active now in edit mode we're going to hit P and we're just going to go separate by loose parts so hit P and then separate the selection or by loose parts but just do selection it should be fine now that's its own object. So if we tab out of edit mode, we can now grab this. And if you see, we hit G and we move it, it's its own object. So let's quickly go to our modifiers. And let's just give this guy a bevel modifier. Come over here to the limit method and make it angle. And then you can just come here to the amount and just decrease it till the bevel is a lot smaller. And if you want, you can hit Z and go into wireframe so you can see the bevel. So you can see this is what's happening here. So I'm going to go with 0 0.001 and increase the segment count a few times. And then on top of this, we're just going to add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth that out. And we're going to go to object mode and enable shade smooth. And now that looks really cool. Um, we'll get to this a little bit later. There's a few little refinements we can do, but for now that's pretty much okay. So let's select the lantern part and let's tab into edit mode. 
And um, in fact, we don't even have to go into edit mode, just go back into object mode. And while we have this guy here selected, we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate it, right click to let go. And while it's still active, we're gonna tab into edit mode, go to your edge select here, and then go to your top orthographic view by hitting seven. And if you hold Shift and Alt in, you can go around like this and just click like this. Click on each edge here, and that's gonna loop select each edge going down like this. So just clicking while we hold Shift and Alt in. So we have all of these edges here selected. Then if you hit Control B or Command B on a Mac, so Control B, you're just gonna bevel these edges like this, and you're gonna give it a thickness about that much. You can see we have that, and while it's still active, we're gonna go and click on our Face Select option. And then if you hit Control I or Command I, it's gonna inverse the selection like this. Then if you hit X and you delete those faces, you're only left with these guys here. So if we hit A to select everything, you can see they're active. And what we're gonna do is, while we still have our face select here and we have all of this active, we can hit E to extrude, and then Alt S, and we're gonna scale it out along its normals, just like that. Now we have these ribs for the thing, the lantern. So hit seven to get a top orthographic view. Hit Z, go into wireframe, go to your vertex select option, deselect everything, and then if you hit C, you bring up the C select tool, and we're just gonna go roll the middle mouse button to grow it, and we're just gonna click like this to select all of these verts here. So this is important. So just selecting all of these verts on the very end. And do the same thing at the bottom. Go to the bottom, and just make sure to select all of these verts like this. And the reason we're doing that, because we wanna select all of these faces. You can see we have the faces on the ends here selected. Then we're gonna hit X and delete those faces. And the reason we wanna do that, when we now come over here to our modifiers, we can add a subdivision surface modifier, and we're not gonna get anything funny happening on the end. Because if I were to like just quickly add in a face here and end, you can see what happens, it um, does this weird stretching. So getting rid of the faces helps with that issue. So let's tab out of edit mode now, go to object mode and enable shade smooth. So now we have that part done. So let's select the lantern underneath it, this guy on the inside. Tab into edit mode, and what we're gonna do here is we're going to um, just hit A to select everything, and we're gonna right click, and we're gonna go subdivide. And now we're gonna go over to our edge select, deselect everything, we're gonna go shift, alt, and we're gonna go and select every middle edge like this while we're holding in shift and alt. Just going around like this, it shouldn't take too long at all, just a few seconds. Just going around holding in shift and alt, clicking on these edges till they're all selected in the middle. And then if we go Alt and we go S, so Alt S, we can scale this in along the normals. You could scale it out if you want. Maybe you can create kind of like a different kind of lantern, but I feel like it just looks better taking it in. And that's what most of the reference images show. So just like that, it gives a little bit of a divot. And then we are going to go deselect everything. Shift Alt, click on this top edge here to loop select it. S, Z, zero to flatten it. And G, Z, just to bring it up a little bit like that. In fact, scale it if you want as well. Just bring it, tuck it in there, that's all. And you can do the same thing at the bottom. Just scale it in, tuck it in a little bit. Bring it down if you have to. Just creating this nice kind of finish at the top and the bottom. Tab out of edit mode. Give this a subdivision surface modifier. Go to object mode and enable shades move. So there you go. That's looking okay, but what we do need to do is tab into edit mode, and if you go shift alt and you click on the edge here in the middle, enable proportional editing, you can kind of scale, hit S to scale, and just scale it a little bit till it kind of touches that um, the ribs out here. So you can just grab different edges and hit G, Z, move them up or down till you kind of just close the gaps. It's not much, but just that little detail helps it look a little bit more coherent. So just making those little adjustments. So yeah, that is kind of getting along. And one of the nice things you'll see here, so we're kind of getting this um, kind of jaggedy look because of all of these um, close edges that are really close to each other. And that kind of gives it this kind of papery fold look almost, which is kind of good. We want, kind of want that look. It doesn't look perfectly smooth if you look really close. And that kind of makes it um, add some realism to it as well. So now what we're gonna do is just select this top part here. And we're gonna go Shift D, Z and bring it down like this. And then in our front view, we're gonna go R, Y, 180 to rotate it around. 
So now it's perfectly rotated and we're gonna go G, Z and just bring it up till it's sitting at the bottom here. Go into edit mode, hit A to select all of it and just scale it up a bit like that. Okay, and there we have that. So now I'm gonna show you a little thing that's important here. So select the top one, tab into edit mode and go to your edge select, disable proportional editing, hover over this edge, go control R, double click, double G, slide down an edge to about here, go to your face select, shift alt, click on this edge here to loop select these faces, E to extrude and then alt S, so right click and then go alt S and scale out along the normals, G, Z, bring it down a little bit. And that's just going to kind of create this lip that goes into there. That looks a lot better. And yeah, it's coming together. You can kind of do the same thing down here if you want. You're not going to see this as much, but if you want, you can kind of do that as well. What I just did. Okay. So yeah, that is pretty much the lantern part done. So now we're just going to add the little pipe stick thing that comes down. So let's go shift alt. That's just going to be a cylinder. You don't have it to have it high poly. So let's just make the verts five or something. Scale it down by hitting S. Make it really small and then just bring it to the top here. So just like that, tab into edit mode and um, just select the top faces and delete them and the bottom faces. Then select the top edge and just go G, Z, bring it up as high as you want, it's about this much. Tab out of edit mode and give that a subdivision surface modifier. Go to object mode and enable shade smooth. And there we have it, that's our lantern. But if you wanted this to actually attach, what you could do, say for example, you're gonna see it from higher, you might wanna just come in here to your edge select, a uh, face select, select an edge uh, face here, holding and shift select a face here, and maybe one across here. So three of them like this. And just kind of space them out as evenly as possible, if you can. So just something like this. And then you can go E to extrude and S to scale and just scale them in and kind of try just to position them in the middle here. Go to your, um, while those faces are still active, just go up here to the tr transform pivot, make it individual origins, and then hit S to scale those faces up like that. It doesn't have to be perfect at all, it really doesn't. So set that back to median point. And there we have it. Now it kind of feels like it's attached to this somehow. And uh, that makes a lot more sense. So let's quickly set up a camera and add some materials here. So I'm just gonna come over here Shift A, adding in a camera. I'm gonna um, just move my camera by hitting G, move it out here. Hit zero to go into camera view and hit G to move the camera. So you guys already know this drill. So just adjust your camera. Go to your camera settings, something like 95 on the focal length is okay. Just move your camera around. And with the aspect ratio here, I like to change it by changing the resolution. So I want a square aspect ratio, so I'm gonna go 1080 at the top, so both the X and the Y are 1080. And um, just, you know, double tap R, hit G to move your camera while you're in edit um, camera mode, whatever. Just get a um, camera view that you like. This is really up to you. This is like one of those things where there's not too much I can do as far as the tutorial goes. Like you really just have to find um, what works for you. Um, so I might just go into edit mode of this guy you don't have to do this. I just feel like this needs to be a little bit higher there. And that looks okay. Oh wait, one more thing that I forgot to add. Obviously the little um, things that hang at the bottom here will really add some, some cool detail to this. So let's just come to the bottom part here. And I'm just gonna select all these bottom verts and just move them up a little bit. And then I'm gonna come in here, Shift Alt, just click on the edge to loop select these verts. Shift D to duplicate and then hit P and separate that by selection. Now if you go into object mode, you can have this loose part here, tab into edit mode. And then, um, in fact, let's just go back to object mode and just uh, get rid of the bevel for this and apply the subdivision surface modifier. Tab into edit mode and then hit A to select everything. Right click and subdivide to add some more geometry. Go to the edge select option and then if with all this active, if you hit F3, you can go checker, type in checker and click on checker deselect. And then you can go um, E to extrude and Z and bring it down a little bit like this. And then if you go Shift R, you can click it a few times and it's gonna repeat that action. Down to about here, like that. And then you can come over here while this edge is still active. Go to your individual origins and then hit S and scale them to make them point here on the edges. And let's set that back to medium point. 
go to vertex select, hit MZ, go to wireframe, and with vertex select, just select the top vertices, like so. Go over to your object data properties, go to your vertex groups, click on plus, and then assign those. So now if we go over to our physics, add a cloth, we can come down to the shape, go to the pin groups and select that group we just pinned, that those top verts, tab out of edit mode, and now if we go to your if you go to your first frame and you hit the space bar, nothing is happening. So I don't know why it's doing that. Let me quickly just have a look. Okay, so what I figured out, if you just grab this guy and just go into edit mode and you select just some of these verts here like this and you just hit S to scale them a little bit in like this. So you get create a little bit of an offset here in the ends and then you tab out. And then if you hit space bar and you run the simulation, you see a little bit more movement there. So yeah, you can maybe even add in a force field there or something if you want. Um, just try some different things, but just having these little um, runners down here can really add some realism to your scene. So yeah, try out different things, but I'm gonna go with that. And on top of this, you can add a solidify modifier to give it some thickness. Just make sure the thickness isn't too much. Go to object mode and it'll obviously enable shade smooth. So now we have these guys hanging here and just pause at a frame that kind of looks good and go into your camera view. So now we have the actual lantern done. So we have those things at the bottom and it kind of looks like my original one here. You can see just like that, it looks pretty cool. So now let's get into adding some uh, materials to this, which are super simple. So let's select the first part and like that part up there, let's go over here, create a new material. Let's name it gold. And I'm just gonna go to my viewport display. I like to make it kind of like a gold material. Just drag up the metallic, it's just so I can see it's been applied. It's not gonna do anything in the final render. I'm gonna select these ribs. I'm gonna go to the drop down, give them that gold material. And then this hub part at the bottom as well, I'm gonna give it that gold material. Oh yeah, and obviously the rod, you can give the rod that gold material as well. And then we're gonna select the cloth part, go new, and this is called cloth. Go to the viewport display, just make it red or something so you can see it's applied. I'm gonna select the bottom part and I'm gonna give it that cloth as well. And that's it. So let's go over into our shading workspace. And I'm just gonna quickly, obviously, go to my render settings, enable ambient occlusion and screen space reflections. And under here, we can also just enable infraction just in case. And I'm gonna go Shift A. I'm just gonna add in an area light. Just place it over to the side here and rotate it in. And you can experiment with the power here. Just mess around with it. I'm gonna go 300 for now and just increase the scale, and I'm gonna hit Z and render, and let's see what that looks like. So you might just have to adjust um, accordingly, but just try different settings. So I'm gonna duplicate this one, rotate it in, so just kind of two points of light coming in here. And then I'm gonna go Shift A, just add in a point light, and move it at the back here. I'm gonna bring the radius up and increase the power quite a bit. All right, so it's really powerful. And in my camera view, I'm gonna just move this guy and duplicate him around the outside here. And that's just gonna kind of create this nice rim lighting, which is gonna help things um, stand out. So something like that should look cool. Now let's just grab the actual, um, one of these golden parts, come to the material here and just kind of give it a golden yellow color, drag the metallic up and bring that roughness down. Now, what I would recommend you actually do is add some textures to this. It's really gonna make it look cool. But for now, I'm just gonna stick with basic shaders. Then select the cloth part, come here to the base color, make it cloth. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the transmission amount up to kind of make it semi see-through. And we're also gonna come over here to our materials, come down to the settings, and we need to enable screen space reflections for this to work and also change the blend mode to alpha hashed and the shadow mode to alpha hashed. So now you can see it's kind of semi-transparent, but we also wanna bring that roughness up. We don't want it too plasticky looking. And um, yeah, so mess around with this transmission value if you want it to be more see-through. But just something like that looks okay. And then you can also just grab one of these lights if you will, shift D, bring it kind of the inside here and bring it down. This would work a lot better in cycles, I would say that but I'm gonna just shrink that. And yeah, there we have that. So if you um, add a nice HDRI in here as well, it'll look a lot better. But I'm just gonna quickly give this a test render, so render image, and let's see what that looks like. 
And there we have it. That is our nice looking lantern here. Um, yeah, you could, I think what I've, what I've done here with these rim lights, I think they're a little bit too intense. So I'm just gonna grab all of them. I'm just gonna move them back a little bit more and see what that looks like. And also just gonna decrease the power in these um, lights here. I think they're a little bit too intense. Let me bring them in here. Yeah. Maybe make that not as um, transmissive. Bring the transmission down a bit. So this is one of those things where you just have to kind of mess around with it, try different things. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If you learned anything, um, you know, share it on the Discord group, which you can find in the description below. And I will be making this um, model here available on Patreon. So I hope you guys found this little modeling slash basic materials exercise fun. And um, check out some of my other content. I'll see you guys next time.